It is already mid-December, and if Willie Fogg is to succeed in going round the world in 80 days, he must return to London by December 21st. But not even the staff of the Morning Chronicle know his present whereabouts. Ralph, I just can't believe that you've absolutely no knowledge of Fogg's whereabouts and whether or not he's on schedule. I just can't stand the suspense, Ralph. Where the blazes could he be? Do you think he's reached New York in time to catch the steamer for Liverpool? What was the name of that steamer he was supposed to take the, uh... China. This is Mr. Fogg's itinerary, the one I originally outlined in my article. If I know Mr. Fogg, he'll follow it precisely, Lord Guinness. I have absolutely no doubt that Mr. Fogg and his friends are yeah. aboard the China right now and will be the first to travel around the world in 80 days. <laughs> if anyone can do it, Mr. Fogg can. No doubt about that, Ralph. Now, let's see. He must return to London by the 21st. Heavens! He has to be in London within a few days. I'm afraid I won't sleep at all well until he returns to London. My nerves are shot to blazes. Lord Guinness would be most unhappy to learn that Mr. Fogg did indeed arrive in New York too late to board the China. America, America. Fortunately, Mr. Fogg and his companions have managed to depart from the city of New York precisely on schedule. Though they missed the China, they have convinced Captain Andrew Speedy of the steamer Henrietta to give them passage to Europe. The Henrietta had been bound to Bordeaux, France, and though Mr. Fogg had planned on going to the English port of Liverpool, this had been the only vessel going anywhere near his desired destination. But as Captain Speedy has fallen ill, he has allowed Mr. Fogg to take command of the vessel, instructing him to head for the nearest port, having the medical facilities and personnel necessary for his immediate and proper treatment. As it happens, the city in question is no other than the English port of Liverpool, Mr. Fogg's intended destination. I can hardly believe we're bound for England. <laughs> it's odd that after all my careful plans, I might succeed due to an illness. Do you think we'll make it to Liverpool on time? Mm-hmm. Captain Speedy has good reason to be proud of his ship. With this fair following wind, I imagine we're doing at least 15 knots. Eh? Fifteen knots, you say? That's amazing. If we continue like this, we could get there ahead of time. Correct, Mr. Fogg? Yes, Mr. Dix, that is correct. <clears throat> Expressive, isn't he? <laughs> I can't explain it, but for some reason I have the feeling that you two have a special interest in my returning to England. Is that true? Not for ourselves, I assure you. We have no special interest in returning to England, but because we support your daring attempt so wholeheartedly, we'll help you to get there as quickly as possible. Isn't that right, Bullet? <sighs> What's the matter with you? I'm terribly seasick, sir. I think I'd better go lie down for a while. Oh, Let me sit down. Oh. I believe you're shirking, you loafer. No. I'm the one that's sick, sick and tired of your laziness. Oh. Do you understand? Oh. Oil room and make yourself useful. Oh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> ah. Hey, get on. It's almost 11 o'clock. It's the time to start huh? cooking today's lunch for Mr. Fogg and the princess. That's right. I almost forgot. The captain fired the cook and we said we'd take over the kitchen for him. Well, what are we waiting for? Ah. <laughs> now we're going to see if you're as good a cook as you say you are. Uh. 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 Oh, I'm dizzy. No, uh. oh, salt. Mm, it smells magnifique. I'm gonna 
never seen nobody mop a floor so slow as you. Hurry it up, or you make it snappy. After trying to poison the captain that way, you deserve everything you get. Mm. Now, work! Mm. Mm, I think it's ready, Tico. Hey! <laughs> the magic words! <laughs> huh? Oh, you're a glutton, Tico. You know that? I gotta make sure it's safe for the princess, don't I? Huh? <laughs> mm, of course it is. I told you it would be, didn't I? Mm, not bad at all. <sighs> Uh, the princess is kind of delicate. Hmm. To be safe, I better take another taste. Ah. Oh, Tico, enough. No more for now. Unfair, unfair. You don't give me no more, I'm going on a strike. <laughs> more, more. What's that smell? It's wonderful. Oh, boy, breakfast. I could eat for a week. <laughs> hey, oh, hey oh. careful. Ah. Huh? Huh? Smells wonderful. You have no idea how hungry I am. Uh, huh? But mm. are you sure you are completely recovered? Recovered? Huh? Remember a terrible stomachache? Uh, you said the cook poisoned you. <laughs> That's right. I was sick, wasn't I? Well, don't worry. My stomach is made out of cast iron, and now I could eat a whale. Uh, mm. This isn't for you, Captain. Sorry. We made that! For Mr. Fogg! And the princess! What's that? What in blazes are you talking about? The captain of the ship always gets served first. It's an old seafaring tradition. Now hand it over. That's an order. You are still a captain, but you are no longer in command of the Henrietta. Monsieur Fogg is her captain now. You mean that pirate stage a mutiny? What are you talking? <laughs> you gave him command. I'm a you myself. Oh, to think of it, you're right. Ah, that doesn't matter. I'm hungry. That's all that counts. We'll make some more in a few minutes. Then Mr. Fogg huh? can eat later. I'm hey, gonna eat it on. On. No, you don't. <laughs> Oh, now I have to go and fix some more. Uh, huh? uh, I have to make sure it's all right. <laughs> Again. Tico! <laughs> well, seems to be quite a storm brewing <laughs> off our stern, Mr. Fogg. I would assume that's what's causing these high winds. Not just a storm, a hurricane, Inspector. A what? A tremendously destructive storm like a typhoon, with winds of 60 miles an hour or more. Oh, Mr. Fogg, whatever shall we do? Never fear, Princess. The Henrietta is quite a sturdy vessel. We're going to make full speed and try and sail around it, Princess. Oh. I'll inform the engine room at once. <laughs> Princess, if you'll allow me, I'll see you to your cabin. Of course. Whatever you say. Oh. Listen, we've got to get the engines up to full steam to avoid the hurricane. Bully! Why aren't you working? You're not sick! Oh, but sir, I am! Oh. <sighs> mm. Now that was delicious. Huh? What the? What in blazes? Uh, uh, oh no! Oh, I'm getting dizzy! What the deuce is going on around here? Oh. <laughs> Full speed in a hurricane? Fog must be crazy. Oh, uh, he'll wreck my ship. Oh, oh, oh. You must be nuts sailing full speed through a hurricane. Uh, uh, uh. I see you've made a quick recovery. I can't tell you how happy I am to see you up and around. Uh, Fog, don't you know you're wasting fuel? Why in blazes are you burning coal when the wind is in your favor? Then my Captain. Huh? I was right, you are crazy! You must have lost your mind to try and get through a hurricane under full sail. This wind is too strong, it'll rip them to pieces! Yes, I'm well aware of the risk. Then why are you... I have pressing business in Liverpool, Captain. What about Liverpool? Hey, who ever said anything about going to Liverpool? You did, Captain. What? But I did? When you gave me command, you said to head to the nearest port having a doctor. Don't you remember? Well, yeah, but I'm better now. Too late, Captain. Uh -huh. oh, 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 I can't believe it. This is the first time I've been seasick in 20 years. Me, seasick. Monsieur. Oh, you've been up all night. I'll take over for you while you rest. Now I'm all right. In fact, I'm in quite a good mood. Huh? 
If we can keep up this pace, we'll put into Liverpool a day ahead of time. I'd estimate our present speed at 20 knots, thanks to the strength of these winds. <sighs> the only question is whether the ship can hold up under this kind of punishment. I hope so. Falls, they'll think it's because of the storm. <laughs> Hold me tight, Princess. I'm frightened. Now you must trust him, Mr. Fogg. He knows what to do. A mast is down. What will we do? Press on. We have huh? enough sail left to run before the wind. Oh, not anymore, monsieur. The wind has yeah. destroyed them all. Her bow cleaving the storm-tossed waters of the icy sea, the Henrietta plunges through the gigantic waves and gale force winds at full speed. The next morning, the Henrietta is a sorry sight indeed. Her sails are torn to tatters, but the engine has escaped damage, allowing the travelers to proceed toward their destination without delay. Oh, oh, oh I'm ruined, ruined. This is a catastrophe. Oh. 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 I hope you're satisfied. The Henrietta is a wreck thanks to you. Yes, Captain, you're right. You'll be reimbursed for every bit of damage that's been done, I assure you. Do you know what you're saying? You've no yeah. idea how much it costs to repair a ship like the Henrietta. Ten or twenty thousand mm. pounds, I would say. Mr. Guess, Fogg! Huh? Yeah. Mr. Fogg, it's gone. We used every bit of it fighting the storm. The coal, Mr. Fogg, there's no more coal! What? No more coal? Naturally. I warned you how wasteful it was to burn coal when the wind was in your favor, not to mention how dangerous it can be. If one of those boilers had exploded, the whole ship would have burned up. Hmm. Burn the whole ship. Right! Ha! Now listen, Captain. Hmm. No! <coughs> Not till after you pay for the damage you've done. My <coughs> thoughts precisely, <coughs> Captain. Huh? In fact, Captain, I want to pay for more than the damage that was done. What do you mean? This. Would you be interested in selling the Henrietta, Captain? What? Do you mean you'd buy the whole ship? Exactly. You see, except for the steel hull, the entire ship is made of wood, Captain, so I intend to burn the wood as fuel in place of the coal, you see? Mm, I'm no fool. This ship is eh? worth at least forty, uh, fifty thousand dollars at least. Hmm, <laughs> my offer is sixty thousand. Is it a deal? Six, sixty thousand? Uh, sixty thousand? Uh. That's all of your money. Do you accept the term, sir? <laughs> Mr. Fogg, I thought of something. You're purchasing the Henrietta to use the wood aboard her for fuel. Which means you have no use for the steel hull or the machinery. True, Captain. And probably by the time we arrive in Liverpool, all that's going to be left is the metal hull on the engine, isn't that right? Right again. Fine. <laughs> say, since you don't want them, Mr. Fogg, how about letting me keep them? What do you say? Mm-hmm. An excellent idea. I have absolutely no use for them. You will own whatever's left. I believe that covers hmm? everything. Do we have a deal, Captain? Yes, sir. <laughs> we sure do. <laughs> Mr. Fogg, congratulations. You are now a ship owner. <laughs> <clears throat> huh? Oh, uh, <laughs> Now. Yes, sir? Anything on board that's made of wood will use as fuel. We'll start at the top and strip the ship down to the deck. Inform the crew we'll start at once. <laughs> I'm on my way, monsieur. Let's go, Kiko! Oh, what are we waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, buddy, you heard Mr. 
the fog, now get cracking! Oh. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Lost in luck. Everything would have worked so perfectly if only that mast hadn't have fallen on me, and now I have a huge lump on my head the size of a... <laughs> I'll be fine as soon as I wake up. <laughs> I can't believe he accepted the deal. Selling him the Henrietta for $60,000, an old derelict that's been in service for 20 years. I've struck it rich. I'll get $60,000 from Fogg, and I get to keep the hull, which means that I can rebuild the entire ship for less than $20,000. Then I'll resell her again for $80,000. What a deal. <laughs> With your permission, Captain. What the? <laughs> Sorry to be so abrupt, Captain, but this is an emergency. There, that bed bully, that'll burn nicely. Um, dear, this table is heavy. Hey! Just where do you think you're going with that bed? Boiler room, Captain. Come on, boiler room. Boiler room? Now, wait a minute. What am I going to sleep on? That table fell out. You can't burn it. Come back here. Oh, what a remote development this is. Well, here's what's left of the dining room. Every stick of furniture. They can't do this to me. They can't. <laughs> I have more money than I've ever had before, and now I don't even have a bed to sleep on. Huh? Look, Tico. Huh? It looks like that mast that didn't fall down all by itself. It had little help. You're right. But since the damage is already done and the mast is useless, we might as well use it for fuel, eh, Tico? Right. If he fails to complete his journey in time, Mr. Fogg will be penniless, a fact on which he wastes not a moment's consideration. His determination is fired only by that which is of consequence to a gentleman such as he. He has given his word that he will succeed. Now, due to his unparalleled ingenuity and daring, the Henrietta Ferry flies over the waves for England. Since there are no sails, this one goes too. Hey, you better get out of the way. You're going to be flat as a fettuccine. Get out of here. Think the lifeboat's next, balloon. Right. It wasn't me that yelled, sir. It was the lifeboat. Lifeboats don't yell. Now get to work. I got you in. Hey. Odd. Keep it coming, Jimbo. Right. I don't see nothing else to burn up here on deck. There's nothing left. It's the deck. Oh. Ah, that's it. We'll burn the deck. Uh -huh. Burn the deck? <laughs> Come on, Tico. Ah, wait a minute. If we burn the deck, where's the princess going to stay? Have you thought about that? Ah, uh, no chair to sit on, no bed to sleep on. At least I've got a roof over my head. Uh, yeah. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Hey! Oh, no, not the roof, too. What are you doing? Well, what's going on? We're ripping the deck up for fuel. You're what? Now, if you'll excuse me, there's work to be done. Huh? Hey, wait! Stop! Stop! Oh. 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 
dear, oh dear, oh dear. Man overboard! Well, don't just stand there and help me up, Bully. Come on! Right. Don't <laughs> worry, friend. This will protect you. What, Dico? You I can talk better if you move your arm. Hmm? I say I'm gonna protect you, don't worry. I've no doubt you will. Thank you, Tico. Uh, eh? Hey, you dummy, this is a princess room is a cabin. Now cut that out. Uh, now where's your manners? Uh, don't you know a lady needs a little privacy? Now nah, get out of here. Go on. But I said... I don't care what he said. Oh. Get out of here. <laughs> Look at him. Hey, what's going on up there? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, watch out. Oh. Here. I'm sorry to have dropped in so unexpectedly. Uh, the boards wouldn't hold me. What's the matter with you guys, eh? Ain't you got no respect for a lady? Oh. All the huh? respect in the world, I'm sure, but we need this. Why do you expect us to sit, Inspector, on the floor? Friends, oh, oh, sorry, Princess. As the Henrietta plows through choppy seas, Willie Fogg reflects upon the incredible events of the past 78 days. He and his companions are within a few hundred miles of completing their globe-circling journey in less time than any previous travellers in the history of the world. But he has not a moment to spare. Or to accomplish the trip within the 80-day time limit, he must arrive back in London by tomorrow evening. It would appear that Mr. Fogg's plan is working. The smoke pouring from the Henrietta's funnel indicates that her engines are still moving the ship along at full speed. But now that the vessel is almost completely stripped of wood, the question remains, can they reach their destination before their fuel runs out? Hey, I'm uh, sorry they took your roof, Princess, but they said they gotta burn every bit of wood to keep her going. Never mind, Tico, it doesn't matter. Hmm? We all must do everything that we can in order to help Mr. Fogg complete his journey successfully. And he will succeed, Tico, I know he will. He's a great man, Tico. The kindest, yet most daring gentleman I've ever known. And so, we leave our friends aboard a mere skeleton of a ship, running low on fuel, plowing through the icy Atlantic in mid-December with only courage, loyalty, and determination to see them through. In our next episode, Willie Fogg arrives in Liverpool with only a few hours to reach the Reform Club in London. But Mr. Fogg and his friends must contend with the dangerous transfer, whose crafty, criminal, craven cunning causes the coach ride to the club to become a close call to calamity. Be sure to join us for Last Train to London, the next episode of our thrilling journey around the world with Willie Fogg. And I will be there.